one. So just pay attention on the screen, everyone. So I will remove this category. I will remove this net cell. Now I want only this block, only this block here. So how I'm getting this block here as a separate, then this block, and then divide this by this. Okay. So we have three categories in my data set. We have a three categories in my data set, right? I want to do a sum of only one categories. When, when we do a sum, when we do a sum, what happens? So sum is happening. Sum is for all the rows. We want only for one, one category, which is maybe furniture, office supply, this one. So what I'm saying, I'm trying to say here is we are trying to do a conditional calculation. So maybe I can explain you quickly in the simple uh, data set. Okay, pay attention on the screen, everyone. It's a very easy and interesting example. But you just need to have your focus. I need your focus here. So let's say you have a A, then you have a B, then C, then A, B, B, C, and then A. Okay. Now here you have some values like 100, 200, let's say 300, maybe again 200, 100, 500, 200, 600. So if I say total sum, I can go ahead and do the sum of this column. So I will get a total sum, right? So this is my formula of a total sum. Everyone clear with this? Now, my task is to find out sum of only A. Sum for only A. So, we have to filter this. We have to filter this. We have to only filter for A and then we have to get the value of A, which is 100, 200 and 300. And we want to get the value of only A. So, it may be 600. Clear this? What is the calculation we are trying to do now? We don't want this total sum. In our example, net cell is giving me information of all the rows, but I don't want all the rows. I want this is, let's say, my furniture, this is my office supply, and this is my technology. I want for a specific element, for a specific category, I want to see the total. So, how we are going to get this information by using the DAX? It's a it's a very interesting one. You are doing the conditional sum. This is your regular sum, but this is your conditional sum. When the condition is met, you are doing some sum. Okay. So just pay attention on the screen. I will go to the new measure. Everyone, I'll go to the new measure. I will go to the three dots and click on this. So I have a new measure on my this one. I will say here, okay, this is my dollar furniture sales i only want furniture sales so i from the entire data set i am only targeting on the furniture set only this information so i am going to use the formula very very powerful formula called as a calculate so calculate i am going to use the calculate calculate will help me to do a conditional calculation now expression do you remember what is meant by expression i have explained you yesterday a little bit about the expression <clears throat> anyone remember about the expression Formula, exactly. Very nice. Very nice, Pawan. You remember this part. So whenever you have a word expression, that means you have to pass some formula. So I want to, you know, like filter a net sale column. So I will give here as a information about net sale. And what I'm saying is, okay, go to this net sale column, comma, and then you have to filter. What you have to do? You have to do the filtering. So filter of what? So I'll say go to the order table, go to the category column, Go to order table, go to category column and search for furniture. Okay. Pay attention on the screen. I'll explain you this example, this formula, and then we will see how it works. Maybe I can reduce the size here a little bit so that the formula will be more clear for you. Okay. Look at this. Huh? So what I did, I have started with the F cell measure, new measure. Huh? This is the new measure in the three dots. I started with the new measure. So I have a calculate formula, then it says expression. Okay, I want to filter all these values, but only for furniture. So in my order table, there is a category column. So what I'm trying to say to the formula, go to the order table and filter for uh, the category. So here is the column, filter for the category furniture and do the sum. So you have this answer, F sales. Now let me show you how this looks. You remember yesterday we did the accounting format. Accounting format, how you can do the accounting format. You can select this furniture sales, go to measure tool and click on this accounting format. This one. 
so go to this major tool in the major tool you have this accounting format i'll click on this accounting format and zero decimal zero decimal i would like to prefer now i will move this furniture sale into this section see what happens now you have this separate column you have expected from this part you have this separate column expected from this part this is your net sale remember this is your net sale and this is only your furniture sales clear so you have filtered you have filtered and you have applied the conditional calculation here conditional formula and which is helping you to find out only uh, sales only sales for the one category which is furniture everyone clear this so what we are doing is we are doing applying the calculator now why the calculate is used calculate is used to do a conditional calculation right so we have a first argument as an expression where i have the formula and saying okay this is my net sale and i don't want all the information i want specific out of category column out of category column just you know like a uh, uh, split for uh, get the data for furniture okay so this is my filtering area this is my filtering part okay sandesh clear na net sale is itself is a one value as a total value it's already a sum value okay so let me create a formula for you and i will explain you one more time so i'll go to the three dots and measure acha question to all of you why we are creating the measures here new measures is it compulsory to create a new measure here anyone remember why we are creating all the new measures in this table it's a professional way better management it's definitely not compulsory but if you are doing it here so you are keeping it concise very nice very nice perfect so don't get confused like if you see in future these formulas inside the table that's also fine but this is good to it's a good way uh, to organize okay it's a best practice so i'll click on this one and here i'm saying okay a uh, dollar let's say os sales office supply sales okay so what is my formula calculate i'll say go to the net sales comma then go to the order table and in this you have a category column and that should be equal to office supplies close bracket hit enter okay now you have a office supply as a new measure if i move this new measure here office supply see what happens you have a accounting format with two decimal i don't require a two decimal so what i will do i will select this office supply i will go to the measure tool and there i will make sure like this is accounting format as well as zero uh, decimal so i'll make sure this is a accounting format with zero decimal okay now i want to compare these two entities these two are my major products for example you have two products having the almost you know like similar uh, customer base and similar values now you want to see which one custom which one the customer are asking for more right how they are performing so this i want to see how furniture is doing compared to the office supply so i want to see here whether furniture is good or bad in this case what you will say in this say what you will say is the furniture is doing good in the in, in for year 2011 sorry 2012 651000 is the sales done by the furniture and for office supply it is good right but we want to see that good or bad in terms of percentage so if it's a positive then definitely it's a it's a good if it's a negative then we will say okay no they are they is not doing good right so kind of thing so we are going to create a new measure here which will help me to find out the percentage right so how it's going to work pay attention on the screen everyone i will go to the new all measure i will go to the new uh, three dots then click on the new measure everyone pay attention on the screen very interesting example here i am going to say okay furniture versus office supply so this is my uh, formula which i want to say is equal to i will type here as a divide divide is the formula where i have a numerator and denominator denominator as well as a alternate result so save divide function with ability to handle divide by zero case so if there is some error you can put the if uh, kind of a instead of error what you want to see so numerator i want to compare furniture f sales comma versus office supply os so f sales is my numerator 
denominator is my office supply close bracket i will not go for the third argument as of now i will close this one so i have f and this one so i will move this f and this it says me 1.07 so 1.07 is what 107 percent that means definitely it's a seven percent better than office supply furniture is bet better than seven percent better than office supply but it's good to show this information in terms of percentage so what we are going to do is we will select this divide formula which we have created i will go to the measure tool and any guess how i can format this in terms of percentage exactly i will click on this simple percentage sign exactly so i'll click on this percentage sign and look at this now i have a two decimal if i'm not happy with the two decimal don't want to show this big number i'll make it zero decimal exactly look at this so now you can say okay anyways every year uh see in a 2012 it was seven percent high then three percent then five percent but in 2015 they were very close so the demand and uh, revenue generated from these two entity was almost same they were doing absolutely same like they were performing uh you know like uh, in the same way in the same manner and now we can do this kind of conclusions here right now this is something like very very powerful thing which is not readily available in excel even in the power bi like if you put just simple formulas and you have the answer interesting yes or no this part divide formula is divide x is clear okay now we also have r r is what r is either so i want to give a discount if either he is a premium customer or his amount is more than 3000 i want to give a discount in both the cases so now what happens is okay um, see i have given an r in this so when you look into this one here uh, what i have done is i have used the or operator here or operator or is like you know either he is a premium customer or his amount is more than 3000 if any one of the conditions satisfies this statement is going to be executed that means he will be getting a discount okay so that is where we use the or operator yeah so if i run this one so you are eligible for a discount the total billing amount is 504 this is clear all clear with this Hello. so understood this r and uh, this one r is like you know see whether he is a regular customer or he's just an ordinary customer okay but and the bill amount is also not matching so in this case he will not get a discount you can see 560 is the billing amount he will get a discount if he's a premium customer okay he will get a discount irrespective of whatever the amount is doing so he will get a discount you can see 504 or i say he is not a premium customer i say he's an ordinary customer but um, he does a sales of more than 3000 so still he will get a discount okay so he will get a discount in any one of the conditions it doesn't mean that it has to satisfy both the conditions okay that is the difference between the logical and and the logical or operator 